Hi everyone, it's me, Ben slash Potlicker slash whatever you want to call me. For my project, I'm going to be doing a video over this book called Five Worlds The Sand Warrior. This book is pretty neat and interesting. It's a fiction book made by five different people. <laughs> Anyways, let me take you by the hand and dive into the wonders of a world where, for some reason, everyone's obsessed with sand. We start off with this girl named Ona. Yeah, this book makes up weird names for things, and I'm probably gonna mess it up, but back to the story. So this girl named Ona, who for some reason everyone hates, but we'll get onto that later, is one person out of a whole group of people called Sand Dancers. And if you guessed correctly, this is basically a person who dances with sand around them. It's a bit more complicated than that, but it's complicated. I guess this is a good time to point out that these people have stones that have sand inside them that allow them to control the sand around, and it's also complicated, but whatever. So Ona and her friend Via start practicing for this big ceremony called Beacon Day, which is the day that the planet's chosen one is supposed to light a big tall beacon that was made by the gods. Easy enough. Truth is, Ona doesn't want to be a part of the ceremony because her sister was the chosen one last Beacon Day, but her sister ran away. Because of that, everyone on the entire planet really hates Ona. But also, Oda just absolutely sucks at being a sand dancer. Or is she? Ooh, story plot. But anyways, since Ona is such a klutz, she loses her sand and starts wandering around the place. When eventually she finally catches the thing, she hears some man talking about the five worlds. She takes a beak and recognizes that it's the high... Council? Something like that. The man says that the worlds are dying because it's been years since the beacon has been lit, and because of that, the worlds are overheating, which is a little weird in my opinion. Ona is so shocked about this that she loses the grip of her sand and starts bouncing all over the place. The High Council is aware of her presence. She starts running on the roofs in an attempt to get away, then BOOM! She runs into some guy with a sand mask. Instantly, Ona senses that he's the chosen one because he said this. No one's supposed to know who I am. Does this seem likely to me? But okay, I'll let that slide. So they start to talk, view some important stuff together. He reveals his face and he's a Toki, which no one will really like in a couple of pages. Then they go to a museum to see some really old god bones. While they're there, Ona loses control over her sand AGAIN, then chases after it. And, on the plus side, she finds some text saying that the worlds will die in five days. Also, fun fact, I forgot to say this, but the chosen one can't do the one thing that he's supposed to do, which is combine sand together. So, Oda and him both are terrible. But hey, let's go find Oda's lost sister, Jessa, because the chosen one's like, hey, since your sister was the last Beacon Bay chosen one, how about she helps me? On the plus side, they actually know where Jessa is because she left a note to Ona saying to meet her at Moon... Moon Deva? Something like that. The Chosen One explains that Ona is the only one to get Jessa because... Book plot. The next day passes and it's Beacon Day. While everyone's distracted, Ona goes to a ship to go find her sister. Enough of Ona, let's jump to a different kid. And let's name this person Itsu. We see Itsu bribing some worker for some cards to get some H2O for a plant fern. Cool. Fern uses the H2O to make him live and gives Itsu some food in return. Itsu runs around the place giving the food to whoever needs it most. Such a nice boy. We then see that he's slowly turning something. I'm not sure if it's a spoiler, so you have to find it out. Go read the book. Itsu goes to a big stadium full of hundreds of people watching a couple other people battling out in robot gear. Jack's aim boy. He's interesting. Okay, back to Ona. We see her staring at something called the Red Relay Tower, which powers all the ships in the area. So smart. One tower that makes all the ships fly. What could possibly go- Oh. Oh heck! It explodes and all of a sudden, all the ships start falling out of the sky. Ona's ship crashes into the stadium where Itsu and Jax are, but not before Ona does something insane! Which, I can't tell you, you have to read the book. I'm pretty sure it's a spoiler. Anyways, inside the rubble, Ona finds Itsu, and then they both find Jax, with his arm cut off. Yeah, an arm! 
but he doesn't really care too much. Whatever. They get out of the rubble and see that basically everything they see is destroyed. Wonderful. Well, let's just turn the page and- Oh, heck! The chosen one's about to light the beacon! He's about to do it! Uh, oh, wait. Never mind. He gets stabbed in the leg. The whole High Council and the rest of the Sand Dancers get captured by the Toki. Yep, remember what I said earlier about how you would hate them? So, yeah, that happens. Apparently, they're actually the ones behind all of this destruction. So... They also steal those old god bones I said before. Well, what I forgot to say is that they actually keep the entire place together, and... <sighs> you get the idea. The Toki get away, and the castle crumbles. Well, time to find Fern! Yeah, remember him? I don't think so. Okay, let's go. We find Fern in a little house surrounded by fire. And, by the way, I forgot to mention this. Fern is grass. So, since the Toki have basically taken over the place in one day, they now have to leave the island and go somewhere else. So why not use Fern's cousin's ship? Alright, so on the ship we actually get some backstory. Fun fact. So many, many years ago, Great Queen and her court came to these five different planets. The people on the planets loved her. And speaking of love, the queen and her artifact fell in love, but not before making these big beacons so that they could save the worlds, not die. The queen and the artifact had a son and named him Philid? Philid? Ah, uh, you, you can figure that one out. Then something called the Mimic snuck into the world and basically, it was the devil. He was evil, it made everyone else evil as well. The Mimic also took control of the Artitek, the Queen's one love. So to stop the Mimic, the Queen shot one of her arms at it and blasted it way deep into Moon Tuki. But the Mimic was still able to control the people on the planet, so the Queen sacrificed herself to stop the Mimic's influence and set her prince away. The end. Okay, let's skip ahead a little, shall we? Okay, we're in a cave so that Itsu can help heal his thing. Problem. Again, you have to read the book. So after he's done, Oda gets into the water, cause story plot. And also because she wants to see a drawing better. And then above her head, there's a... Well, that's a big spoiler. Actually, it's... It's the biggest spoiler ever. Well, now that I think about it... Uh, the, the whole rest of the book is a big spoiler. Uh, I, I think that might be it. Cause, uh... The rest of the book may shock you, huh? Well, go read the book! I give it a 7 out of 10. But tell me what ratings you give it after you read it. Then we could talk about the book all day. 